Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Yomesh Gupta and in this video we are going to solve a front-end interview question from Atlassian's interview process. It's going to be a fun and uh, simple UI challenge which they primarily ask as a machine coding round question for SD1 and SD2 and in which we have to build an interactive chart similar to velocity chart in the Jira product. Uh, so let me give you a quick demo. We would be given this data where it's an array of objects and each object contains ID, name, ticket, count, color. And using this data, we have to create a chart here. Uh, let me show you a demo. So if I click on this toggle chart, then this uh, animated chart should appear. Let me show you the animation again. All the bars should, uh, you know, increase or animate height from zero to their maximum height where y axis represents number of tickets and x axis represent departments and each bar in the chart corresponds to one department and when we hover over it then it should show a tooltip which will uh, tell us the department name and the number of tickets and uh, and if we click on the toggle chart again then it should be hidden and clicking on it again should show it basically toggling the visibility so this is the question and uh, all the functional requirements that we discussed uh, or shown in the demo are mentioned here and we have a couple of mockups. So uh, like I always mentioned that before starting any question break down into smaller achievable parts. So what we are going to do is that we are going to first build the toggle button and then the, we would render the chart and eventually we'll come to the interactivity where we'll, we are going to talk about the tool tips and the uh, maybe animations. So in this case, uh, let me first uh, build the button. So for button, we would need some sort of state management. So I'll import the use state from uh, React. And uh, so let's do one thing before even starting this. Let's create all the files that we we are going to need. So we have the style.css, we have data. We would also need a bar chart. Basically, this is, would be the component that is going to house our chart component. So we have all the files here now. So let me just close this. And uh, so let me create a dummy component here. So we'll have the bar chart component, which is going to let's say uh, return a div, which says uh, chart would be here. And let's export it. Now inside our uh, app.js, we are going to import this component uh, bar chart from bar chart and we are going to render it here. Now we are seeing the chart would be here. So it is rendering and so we have the chart data. We are going to pass it to our component. But before that, let's go back to defining our uh, state or the button in this case so inside this we would have a button which would say toggle chart as shown in the demo now we can what we can do here is that we can we need a state to manage it so we can say show chart and set show chart new state which would be maybe false by default so if we have show chart then we are going to render the bar chart component else we'll, uh, we are going to not render anything so inside this maybe we can give it a class name of a container and inside our styles what we can do is that we will assign some styling to it okay so when we are going to assign some style so we container let's say some padding of 30 pixels maybe and uh, let's make it plex and plex direction column uh, justify content center align item center some basic stuff basically now we have to style the button so we can say dot container button I'm not adding any class I'm just simply styling it so ins inside this we can say uh, maybe border 0 background color uh, 2 I'm not sure which color it was let me check 2C 3E I think 50 yeah and we can say color it would be white 
uh, padding uh, 10 pixels, 15 pixels, border radius 4 pixels, font weight bold. Now this is done. Let's coming back to our app.js. Let's add the toggle functionality. So on click, we would have we would pass the callback which say set show chart and let me just push it to the next line for more readability and inside this we can say previous value not a previous value so basically we are just uh, toggling the visibility so if I click this then this should work let me just uh, do one more thing this should become cursor pointer so it, let me refresh this so we have the work button working now cool now we can do one thing uh, we can make it a bit more delightful you know small small micro interactions small small uh, what you call animations make your uh, uh, question or make your any uh, UI uh, experience much better so here what we can do is that container button dot uh, active whenever it's active what we can do is uh, transform scale 0 0.9 and to this we can add a transition which would say maybe all for now 0 0.2 is in and out so if you see the button now see there is a little let me zoom in and show you again see there is a minor uh, interaction now which makes uh, gives the user uh, direct visual feedback and make it more delightful so this is done now let's go back to our chart component or app.js in this case what we are going to do is to bar chart component we will pass the data as the chart component and if we go to our bar chart now we will have this data so basically in this component what we want to do is that we want to uh, build what I am telling you in most layman uh, terms build a box inside box a uh, box here I mean a chart where we will have a y axis and x axis basically somehow we need to represent that and uh, each uh, data item maps to a bar basically a bar in the chart okay and with its corresponding color so let's implement the chart now if we see the mock-up here we have this chart uh, x-axis and y-axis we have these uh, legends where y-axis says number of tickets and x says departments and individual bars so let's create some basic structure here so let me close this so inside this what we are going to have ideally is that we are going to have a div basically which is going to be let me just create a structure very basic structure this is going to be our chart this is going to be our chart container and what else do we need we need a y-axis thing so what we can do here is a uh, number of tickets we can say and this one would be number of or not number departments now ideally these are labels so we can pass a class called y axis label and this one would be maybe x axis label okay now we have this but the chart and chart container uh, we haven't implemented any styling so let's go to that so this question also focuses on a lot of styling that how well the CSS you can write so in this case we will say maybe width 80% and uh, chart container uh, let's give it a height of 500 pixels maybe for now and uh, what else so my chart would have a width of 100% height of 100% and this would have a border of 1 pixel solid 414141 um, let's make it a bit bold 2 pixels now this is our chart container in and 
we have the chart also in this now uh, we don't need all the borders we just need the this left border and bottom border to give that look so what we can do is we can say bottom not bottom sorry border i think right width zero so this will uh, disappear or hide the right border line and same we can do for top thing uh, top fit and zero so this will give us that graph look now we want to highlight our axis so basically we want to highlight our label along the axis so now to highlight that we want to position them absolute and when we do like something like if i do something like x axis label position absolute so right now this is absolute to the parent closest parent that has a property position relative if we, uh, if there is uh, we don't find that then we'll it will bubble up to the root element but we don't want that we want our chart container to be that element so we can say position relative and if i say top zero and left zero so this would be pos ap positioned absolutely respective to my chart container component so when you learn about different positions in css then you have to remember that how they work uh, in you know how they're complementary to each other that if you assign position absolute to something then it is absolute to the viewport to the parent to the root element and whatnot so let's coming back to this we want it to be 50 percent so that it's centered we can say transform maybe translate x minus 50 percent we can have a translate y which would be again minus 50 percent and we can have a rotate minus 90 degrees so this is now aligned to our axis and we what else do we need here we are we can say font weight bold maybe So now if I give to just to show you, let's say if I give red color, so this is red color. We can do one more thing. Let's do to make it, you know, a bit better. We can apply a bit of padding here. Let's say 10 pixels. Now uh, this will give our this uh, label a much more, a much better look. And if I give it like a margin, uh, I think left of minus 10 pixels, it will make it more clean so if i remove the background color now so this is much better now i applied the background color to see the reference same for x axis i can say label i can say position absolute and uh, left 50 percent and we can have a transform of translate x which would be minus 50 percent same properties font weight uh, do we have a common properties in this no we can i mean we can do a common class but for now this would work and we do have a minus margin top of 10 pixels just to give that same look now if i remove the background color we have our uh, bar chart where there would be some chart component here and we have both the labels number of tickets let me zoom in and show you a bit so we have both the labels aligned to the axis let's move on to implementing the chart so we have the data here basically data is an array of objects where each object refers to a bar so we can uh, map over it we'll have the item and we'll render here so let's create a bar component which is going to get all the data uh, primarily each bar data which is would be id name ticket count error ticket ticket count and color so we need a name we need the color and we need the ticket count so inside this what we are going to do is we are going to return the bar we'll have the key as item dot id and we are going to spread the item now this is not returning anything that's why we are seeing the error so inside the bar we can say div 
and we can give it a class name of bar right now so let's create the bars that we see in the mockup so let's create those so inside our styles we can say our we created the chart let's say inside this we'll create a bar so if we make it a display flex uh, justify content space between and align items flex end because we want the bars to start from the bottom we can say flex one and uh, uh, we and what else do we need let me check so we created the chart component we provided the bar yeah we need uh, some sort of height so right now if i give it uh, like a, let's say if i give it a height of 100 percent then it will all the bars and some sort of background color also let's say red so uh, if i gave a let's say 20 pixels so now we have individual bars but we don't need want that or individual bars to the maximum height we want each bars height corresponding to the number of tickets so what we can do here is we need these properties so let me remove it from here i'll go to my bar chart component I have a color here so I can say style background color would be this color and for height one way to do would be that we can say height uh, ticket percent so ticket count sorry ticket ticket count percent so now we have all the bars here with some uh, padding uh, along the way but this is not scaled up this is not using the uh, all the uh, height the the entire height of the chart ideally we want let's say if we have the you know numbers here let's say this is 10 the another step is 20 30 40 50 so this goes to the maximum height uh, or maximum ticket count so what we can do here is we have to scale it up basically so inside this we can find the max ticket count so you have seen that if let me comment this out you have seen that if we don't use them if we don't scale it up then we will get this uh, you know uh, this version of the bars where uh, uh, it, it is not using the entire space so if i increase that so i'll say max count i'll use use memo here I will import use memo. I'll show you what I mean by implementing. So uh, we have this data is uh, the, an array of objects where each object represents uh, individual bar and we need the maximum count. That means if we have, if we go to data, we have this uh, 32, 20, 65 and so on. We need 60, which is the maximum value so what we can do here is we will say data dot map which would we would have the item and will return ticket count so this would give us an array uh, 30 60 50 64 and so on and we need the 60 value so from here what we can do here is return math dot max and we'll spread out this so we have the max ticket count so we want uh, max uh, ma we want that all the bars should be scaled up as per or relative to the tallest bar so inside this we'll have the key we'll have the item spread here we'll calculate the height here so height would be uh, something like uh, item dot ticket count divided by max ticket count and into 100 so this would be something like let's say 30 divided by 60 and into 100 so this would come out to be 50 percent we will get the height here and we will let me just comment this out and pass the height here Now if you see the difference our maximum level that a graph can reach is 60 and that is the maximum uh, tar or the maximum bar and all other bars are uh, scaled up as per relative to the maximum bar. 
so that is what we want to achieve and if you see the mockups also that is what we are doing here so if you see now our basic uh, or the first version of the demo uh, question is done that we build the bars uh, we build the bars we build the y-axis x-axis we uh, align the labels also and if I go to my app component and if I make it false then by default it is hidden and if I click on it then we are showing it so let me make it true for now so what else is left we need to build the tooltip also that is going to show us uh, the information about which department it is and the number of tickets so inside this uh, and this tooltip is only visible when we hover over the bar. So that's why we define it here. Let's say we give it a class name of tooltip and it is going to render the name and the ticket count. So right now you can see that uh, it is showing legal 32, sales 30, 20, engineering 60 and so on but we need to build it like a tooltip we need to convert it into a tooltip so we go to styles uh, chart bar what we can do here is that we will define tooltip let's say display block it should be uh, positioned relative to the bar so I'll make it relative and it should be position absolute top 0 or in this case maybe right 0 for now and uh, we will save it uh, max content let's apply some background color some another styling white let's add some padding uh, 4 pixels maybe border radius also uh, 4 pixels and if I see now so these this should be visible when I hover and it should be center aligned so how can we do that so let's say we make it 50% and what we can do is that we can transform it into translate x 50% uh, so this is now center aligned if you see and we want it to be at the top so maybe minus 100 let's try minus 100 or minus 120 percent uh, so this is max content the top is zero position absolute oh my bad we are applying it to okay we can do translate rather than translate x so now if you see that it is at the top with some margin and it is center aligned. So let's do one thing. Let's hide it. So at the bottom, let's say opacity zero. And when we hover over it, when we say bar dot hover, when we hover over the bar, then we'll showcase it. The opacity one. So now it's visible. Let's add a bit more uh, padding here or gap. So we go to the chart container, container, let's say 40 pixels. See, now it's much better. Let's add some Z index also so that this tooltip always takes precedence and it is not hidden anywhere. Now it's just, we built the tooltip also. Uh, let's improve like I earlier mentioned some minor uh, micro interaction let's make it a bit more smooth so what we can do here is we can say again transition transition all 0 0.2 seconds ease and out you can you know play around with these values I'm just taking dummy values and or in this case we can say opacity specifically because we want to work with opacity so if you now see it's much more delightful I can increase this to make it much better see now this is working so we'll, we build the basic uh, chart and all the legends with the labels 
and if we are hovering over each bar then we are showing the tooltip now let's add the animations that on when this is shown then all the bars should animate from zero to their maximum possible height so for this i like to use a library called framer motion so let's import this we have the framer motion it would need react 18 so i'll just update react also here Uh, react dom so bo both are react uh, react dom are updated and we have installed the framer motion also so inside my bar chart component what i'm going to do is that i'm going to import this let's say motion from uh, framer motion and i'll replace my this bar with the motion div. Now we want to style it that initially it should the height should be zero and it should take to the maximum value it should grow. So what we can do here is we can say initial height maybe uh, zero. Then we want to animate it to the this height. Let's mm, copy this or cut it here. Let's paste it here. We want it to be till this percent. And in a, when we exit, then we want height to be zero again. So now if I refresh this, so let me hide it for now. Let me hide it false. And if I click on toggle chart, see, I'll show you again. It is as simple as that. We are just playing around with the simple values. It's just that we can do it with CSS also. I just like to use this library because I'm used to it and it gives a lot more power. You know, uh, it's a homework to you. You can use this library to implement all sort of animations here. If I do it again, then see all uh, our animations are working. We can do one more thing that we can, you know, wrap this whole uh, chart container into a motion div and uh, what we can do here is that we can add some opacity styling here like initially the opacity is zero and when we want to animate it to opacity one and when we exit then opacity should become zero again so and let's add a duration let's we can say transition and duration we can make it to be uh, 0 0.2 now if I refresh this and click on it see we have this minor if I increase just to show you let's say 4 seconds we have the slow animation here that's up to you how you want to show it I mean if you you can take this transition you can you know be crazy like let's say 10 seconds and uh, refresh this now <laughs> it's up to you what you want to do i'm just trying to show you that how using how simple simple properties and simple animations how can you make your uh, question your problem statement a bit more delightful that's up to you I think that's pretty much it. We have implemented the uh, entire problem statement. Let me just go back and there should be a button to toggle. Uh, department data will be provided. We uh, number of tickets and departments. Each bar should be scaled based on the highest number of tickets that we done. We have already taken care of that. Uh, Tooltip, uh, bars height should animate. Yeah, so that's pretty much it from for this question i mean you know it's up to you now that try it try solving it in some other form maybe uh, you know like i mentioned earlier that i have showed you an iterative approach there could be a approach using svg elements creating svg elements there could be an approach using canvas which i think uh, like production grade apps like jira or if you use chart.js or any other library that would use canvas if you want me to do that solution then please mention it in the comments so that i can record and share it with you folks so uh, i think uh, this is done so this is the end of the video i hope you were able to learn something new today or you enjoyed the solution i showed you 
if you feel that i missed out on something or could have done something better then please do mention in the comments do reach out to me on social platforms as always do like share and subscribe uh, i think if you are a regular viewer of this channel you might have noticed that i'm trying to be consistent your support and uh, your uh, feedback means a lot so please uh, share that so till next time see you take care bye bye